about transactional <laughs> nothing to do with transactional actually. there's actually this really cool article um courtship of town and country regarding the joy of traveling solo and i think this is a really good article because if i'm not mistaken it's actually written by the guy who originally read the book um call me by a name is based on um andre Asiman or andre ackman andre Asiman, um and it's called um, gr- the subtitle is group trips are grand but sometimes there's nothing better than being in a new place alone and i love this article because i think it does a really good um it's really good in terms of how it describes the joys of solo traveling while also being in a group. And it just kind of compares and contrasts the different ways that you can enjoy holidays. The sort of itemized checklist off approach to holidays is probably not the way that I like to approach things. I've always kind of approached solo holidays because you know, my, yeah, because I just don't have a big group of friends. So I've just had to do it by default, but also when I do go out, I'd much rather go into the direction generally of where these check mark landmark sightseeing museum places are because most likely in that area you're going to find other things of interest if you just walk around but you don't need to walk and have a list of things to check off i don't really a fan of that because it kind of makes it a little bit rigid it kind of makes it a little bit cold you don't really experience the places you're in and i like to kind of wonder and discover things and get lost and stuff it's quite fun to do so so it's really article anyway because i think it's a really really well written piece i love this piece of artwork here at the top as well um, which is done by a person called Constantine Kakanias. Um, but anyway, let's read the article. It says, traveling is not the same for everyone. We are never the same person twice in one day. So how could we have the same taste as others? I like Rome. My wife likes, likes London. My friends like Los Angeles, with whom we like traveling, prefer travel at Paris. They like to book tickets to museums, like to reserve tables at restaurants, while I've always avoided programmed itineraries of any sort. What we share, though, is wanting something that only travel can offer, and that occurs once we're elsewhere, and alternate holds um, onto things. A different pair of lenses. What is it exactly? Is it something we seldom disclose to others because we're not quite sure we can fathom it ourselves? Maybe this is why we travel, though. We give it many names. For me, it came in focus one day in, Ov- in Ovetio, north of Rome. My wife is sleeping in late. She likes to do that when we travel. I don't. I like to get up before anyone else does and amble down the narrow cobble lanes of whatever small town we're visiting. I like to improvise my walks and hear people greet each other in the mornings. I like to make shift pleasantries from bakeries to pharmacists, newspaper vendors, and I don't mind getting lost. That's something I've discovered that I've started doing quite often as well. When I go on my little solo trips, I tend to not use my headphones. I tend to not have glasses on and stuff just because I want to just, you know, you know, immerse myself in the current location that I'm in and just taking the sights and sounds of what I'm kind of listening to, even sometimes on nights out, which is quite brutal. Um, if I'm especially if I'm going to a place like Berlin, for instance, where maybe you might be waiting in the queue for a stretch of time, not having any headphones can be a little bit of a, a little bit hard to kind of you know get a wrangle your head around but it's actually quite nice for a change to hear these different accents different voices different sounds and to really kind of ingratiate yourself in the environment that you're in personally but again what do i know it continues the article it says i've already read up a bit on Ovetio wines i know a few things about the cathedral el duomo and about teatro mancinelli the scaled down but lavish opera house i've learned about the tunnels dung other than the impregnable rock over which Ovetio was originally built i don't like tunnels and will most likely sit quietly by myself while they all visit the cities underground. This morning, I proposed to meet one of my friends early in the cafe located on the left of the Duomo, which, as I learned from her, was admired by none other than John Ruskin and Charles Elliot Norton. She's late, is she's late arriving. So while I wait, I order a cornetto and a cafe latte. All but one other table is occupied, and a man sitting in the shadow of the meagre hedge bordering the cafe is quietly reading his paper, something I suspect he's been doing every morning this for years. Um, occasionally, I hear it rustle when he turns a page or when the flimsiest draft flows through it. Otherwise, not a ripple in this placid, sunlit square. That's something also you learn when you go to Mediterranean countries. Um, you have to get out super early if you want to grab a table at any cafe. Usually people sit at those tables for long stretches of time without maybe ordering much. There is no culture of like, oh, hurry up and get off the table to get someone else a table to sit down and eat. You know, it's, it's basically a first come, first served affair. They sometimes will hold tables and spots for other people who are going to come later down, you know, around the day. So if you don't find a seat somewhere, you're better off looking for another restaurant. Don't wait for somebody to get off of their seat because they're never going to stand up. They're going to be there until the very, very, very late evenings. It continues here. It says, this is a soundless hour. And 
and it exists in small windows in Italy. Everyone respects it. Soundless hour. Imagine this. So amazing to hear this. No cell phones, no dogs, no babies, no tourists. All these show up, but not just yet. It's Saturday and the people of Orbetio are not in any haste this morning. And that must be true of any major popular city, right? There must be hours of the day where you can especially go if you're a local and just chill and not have, not be worried that there's going to be, you know, hordes of tourists fluttering around making noise and being flipping disruptive or just you know spoiling the vibes there is a really set amount of time that you could go out there and kind of enjoy your little town your little city just for yourself and with the other locals or people that live there the carpenter who seems to be a direct descendant of medieval guild members stands outside his shop with a lit cigarette which he clearly doesn't want to put out and which gives him the thoughtful meditative air of an Italian Einstein still working on a theory of relativity. He hesitates and he's not indifferent to the stillness, no saws yet, no hammers, no fudding away, no drills or hand cranks or the raspy clatter of his rolling shutters. I love the stunning silence in the morning air here. I, an elderly man, hobbles by, not respectfully in my direction. I nod back, not a word. Someone is sweeping litter from the curbside. I can barely hear his broom, but I miss it when he walks away to another spot on the piazza. Silence. And that's something you learn to love when you go to these different places. The silence, um, the noise but just the hearing of different things and not being on your phone consistently. And maybe this is kind of uh, an article that kind of says without saying, you know, social media might have ruined holidays or vacations or just smartphones in general, which I can kind of agree, but I still think that that, that puts way too much um, importance or responsibility on the phones and the apps and not enough responsibility on yourself. I've done, you know, many things myself when I go on these little techno tourist, you know, weekenders where sometimes I will never use my phone when I'm out and about like socially or to post stuff. I'm not posting every update of my holiday and vacation on Instagram stories. I'm not flipping tweeting. I'm not checking the news or whatever. I'm just enjoying where I am. I'm using my phone to kind of navigate the maps. I'm using it to check out things I want to see on the internet, but I'm not doing anything else on the terms of social media things. And I think you can do that easily at restaurants. You can just, you know, have your phone in your pocket, not on a table, in your actual pocket and actually learn to observe people, people watch, sit in your own thoughts, maybe read a book, read a paper and just chill. It's something that takes time, but it is possible. Um, even in this day and age where people's attention spans are horrible and you need, the, you need a dopamine hit of some sort of notification and stuff, you can do it. It just takes a lot of effort to do so, but it is possible. It continues. As I wait to hear the, dis the distant clink of a spoon on a saucer, and sure enough, the waiter appears with a cornetto and a cafe latte and a um, de regu glass of water. Um, I just wait. I can't wait to devour the cornetto. And right away, before he has a chance to disappear behind the beaded curtain, I ask him to bring me another. If my friend arrives, I'll say I ordered it for her. If she doesn't eat it, I'll eat it. Maybe this is why I begin to hope that she won't arrive just yet. I don't mind the wait and welcome another t for five to ten minutes without anyone. And this is actually the beauty of being on group holiday sometimes with people or just even with your partner. Because essentially, sometimes you can find little pockets of time to just enjoy and do what you want. Like I used to do it sometimes as well before, like you just wake up early and just go for a little walk if you just want to get some quote unquote alone time and to kind of center yourself in the city you know, you're in or do the things that you actually enjoy doing, like getting a cafe coffee in the morning or getting some breakfast because some people just would rather lie in and get something on the way out. And it continues, says being alone is an excuse for doing nothing and doing nothing. Um, sorry, let's say, let's read that again. I love that. Being alone is an excuse for doing nothing and doing nothing. Like yielding to Ovetio's mornings is exactly what I seek once I'm no longer tethered to my chaotic day-to-day -day life in New York. People think travel is about seeing new things. Not for me. I'm here for something that has almost nothing to do with sites, monuments, museums, restaurants, or nature, or even people and their customs. What I'm looking for is more than outside of me. It's just as sitting at a cafe allows me to stop at time and to descend it and to dispel my thoughts and indulge in the error or something unusual i love that line here this guy's definitely a writer what i'm looking for is more in me than outside of me just a sitting in this cafe allows me not to stop time but to distend it to dispel all my thoughts and to indulge in the eros of something unusual i want to forget time i don't like time when was time ever my friend i don't ever want um ovetio to give me something new what i want maybe is to be given something back
some intangible something I believe I once cradled but I lost track of and can scarcely remember. I'll eventually take pictures of the Domo and of the old Ovetio, but it's the picture of the little cafe with the meager hedge which separates it from the cafe across the way that I'll treasure. This I'll remember. This is where I waited for a friend and suddenly caught a glimpse of the big paradox that defines my life, that I have always dreaded loneliness, but I love being left alone, which is why I, why I like waiting for my friend. I don't mind if she's late. I want to show her the picture of what Ovetio means to me, a table, a cafe latte, a second cornetto waiting to be eaten into, to business you, sorry, and my half-emptied Becerra de Aqua. Now, I can definitely agree with this being an, you know, an extrovert introvert. I wouldn't say that I kind of dread being alone. Um, I still think there is something beautiful in being able to enjoy your own company, especially in a solo trips. And I think you really are doing yourself a disservice if all your holidays have to be prerequisited and defined by your ability to go somewhere with other people like you can't go on trips places because other people don't agree um i've heard from friends and other people associates of how difficult it can be to get groups of people to agree to go on these holidays and whatnot even just to agree to go on dinner so i can't imagine how hard it is to wrangle a group of adults to decide to go on holiday together so if you're able to enjoy your own company and you don't mind going on trips it does allow you the ability to see far-flung places that maybe some of your friends wouldn't enjoy going to and sometimes i've this for some people if they see you having the courage to go on your own and hang out maybe it gives them the courage to actually hang out and go with you because some people actually are weird where they actually need to go on holidays with more than one person they they don't feel comfortable just going on holiday with you alone but if you share pictures of yourself and this amazing place on your own in some fucking amazing beach somewhere in the middle of fucking thailand then suddenly they also want to go so it can be quite a motivational factor if you're able to do so but i thought this line was absolutely incredible this is i remember as well I waited for my friend and suddenly caught a glimpse of the big proudest moment to find my life that I always dreaded loneliness but I love being left alone that's a great little line in it uh, because I know I'll be thrilled to see her again and I know we'll laugh as we always do I know we'll spend a long time studying the cathedral this morning because she likes to spend time in churches and I love to hear her tell me things I'm glad to learn from uh, I learn from her at some point she'll ask me what's new walking with my hands in my pockets I remember the carpenter dawdling um, outside his store and I'll finally tell her that sitting for breakfast and waiting for her reminded me that I travelled thousands of miles to bask under the invisible spell of that one rare thing in our lives plentitude I felt richer that morning than I'd felt in any long time. Why, she'll ask, because I want for nothing here. Why leave then? Why indeed? Neither of us wants to answer this question, but we know the answer. Part of us wants to stay here and never go back. Another part, thank heaven, refuses to think of this through. And I think that end bit is really poignant because it kind of reminds me of one of the paragraphs I remember reading in the Tim Ferriss book. I think it might have been Four Hour Work Week, where he basically says, you know, the part of, you know, the beauty of vacationing and holidaying is that it's sort of like an adult way of treating yourself in terms of your toiling most of the year. And then you have these short breaks in, you know, spread out across the year where you get a chance to kind of disconnect and unwind, which is why you're meant to do absolutely no work when you go to a vacation. You're meant to be working your ass off, you know, for however long you want, six months a year. And then once that time is over, you can take some time off to kind of do what you need to be done. Put your feet up, enjoy some sun and, you know, get a tan and whatever it may be. Um, but you shouldn't be on like a permanent vacation because it takes the beauty out of vacationing. And it also makes it a little bit dull. You know, also it might help if you're maybe have, you know, if you're not super rich because you, can, you can't do everything. If you got if you got all the money in the world, maybe holidays become a bit boring because you can do whatever you want maybe having a, a particular budget is really important but i think it's more so important for me personally from what i've been able to see and observe from people to be able to just have these short breaks spread out across the year and not have them be things that you do all the flipping time because then it makes it something that you actually appreciate something you look forward to and something that you kind of savor when you're there in the moment and the last thing you want to do is kind of copy and you know uh, the same habits that you have at home that bum you out like always being on your phone like always uploading stuff on ig like checking stuff and all that malarkey you just want to actually do the complete opposite and i found that i do that more often when i'm abroad as well but i guess it depends on the person that you are but this article is absolutely amazing incredibly well written of course um the courtesy of town and country mag.com the title is the joy of traveling solo group tips are grand but sometimes there's nothing better than being in a new place alone written by andre Asiman, the flipping original author of the book of what the movie according by your name was based on so definitely check it out if you haven't already 
but I'll put the link in the show notes or description if you haven't checked it out yourself. It's a really good article. I really, really did enjoy it. Very, very, very well done. 